pubs. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trisha. If we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. I am here with my buddy, my buddy, buddy, buddy. He got a haircut and he cannot stop licking my hand. How are you? What's going on in your life? What projects are you working on? I'm so nosy. I want to know what's going on. I'm not joking. I really want to know what's going on. If you want to share pictures of your projects, you can always um, tag me on Instagram or you can come and join our Facebook group. It is a private group. I know there's some people like, why would you make your group private? Then people can't see all the fun you're having. Well, it's private because that way you can post anything you want and other people on your feed can't see it. You can post pictures of gifts for people and they can't see that either. So that's the reason why I made the group private. So here we are. This is our third video in the Saxtravaganza sack extension of the breed study series. And the breed we're gonna study this week is Southdown. So, Let's read a little bit about Southdown. I haven't been showing you the pictures and last time I forgot to give you like the wraps per inch and all that stuff, but no one mentioned it. So maybe you guys don't care. I'll still give it to you this time. I need my glasses, but I have them right here. That's right, I'm ready. Don't get any ideas, I don't have my life together. Okay, so as always, I'm using the Fleece and Fiber source book as my primary data source. If I need more data on something, I will go to the Spinner's Guide to Fleece first. And then after that, I'll try the interwebs. I've only had to do that once. So South Down Wool. Let's discuss it, shall we? First of all, here's the picture. Let me show you. I know my ring light. I'm sorry, you guys. I just need a lot of light right now because it is dark and raining. It's sort of like sleeting outside. They have cute faces. I called it the big mama, I think last time, but they call it the grand ancestor, which is classier. Let's be real. It's the breed that all the other down breeds came from. It was the first down breed that is recorded anyway. They're from medieval times. That's fun. Not the restaurant slash entertainment place. They're actually from times where people wore doublets and chain mail and things like that. That actually happened. Isn't that weird to think about? That actually, people actually did that. Um, it says they are short-wooled, black-faced, speckle-legged sheep. They were found on the South Downs. What? It's almost like that was like planned. It says an area above the English Channel encompassing Hampshire and Sussex counties. In the book it says they came to the U.S. in the 1600s, they think. They were developed to be a meat sheep, so there's been a lot of different attempts to improve them as far as like how much meat they produce, quality of the meat they produce, that kind of thing. It, it does say that as compared to a lot of other meat sheep, it's relatively small. So they've crossed it with a lot of bigger sheep to try and produce a bigger meat sheep. That's always the thing when it's meat sheep, right? There are some different types of South Down. As far as I know, this is like the medium sized animal that's still a meat sheep. It's, I'm pretty sure. There is also the baby doll South Down, which many of you have probably heard of. They're little. And then there's actually even a smaller one, a miniature or toy. So um, I'm pretty sure this isn't the little in eensy weensy ones. It says those were developed in the 90s. Oh my gosh, less than 24 inches at, tall at the withers. That's a little itty bitty teeny weeny sheep. Oh, okay, so one other thing that I think is a little bit interesting mm, is it says here that they are the foundation of the down family, but also some other breeds that are 
I'm quoting, are still important in the sheep world, and it says, in fact, Suffolk's and Hampshire's have become the most common sheep in North America, but I thought those were down sheep. So interesting, interesting. Um, those are two breeds that I'd really like to include if we do a longer sex extravaganza. Um, I have two more in mind. I don't, some of you have said yes, yes, yes. And then a lot of you have said nothing. And I don't know if it's because you don't want to put pressure on me, but I don't, I, I'm curious what, how people are feeling now that we're on the third breed. Um, I would have to take a break in between just to get the wool in, but tell me what your thoughts are. I am curious. Okay. So South Down Flat flax mm -mm. nope south down facts <laughs> the fleece weight it says four to six to seven to twelve pounds which is still like seven to twelve is a good size fleece so they can't be that tiny it says middle ground gives a working average of five to eight that's still not tiny it's like medium size staple length one and a half to four inches, mostly two to three inches. I'm curious about this. I'd be very surprised if it was like two or three inches, but we'll see what it is. 23 to 29 microns for white, 27 to 31 microns for black. So the black ones have a coarser wool. I didn't even know they had colors. Did I? Maybe I did, because I think I have some black stuff on my stash. Don't quote me. Lot characteristics, dense, resilient, medium grade fleeces with blocky, almost all the down breeds. I think all the down breeds have like a blocky rectangular shaped lock. They hold together, maybe hard to distinguish from each other. Not surprised. So it's pretty similar over the fleece. Um, natural colors, white, there may be a few black fibers because down breeds have colored faces, but any off color fibers lower the commercial value of the wool we have talked about that many many times and there are some colored south downs all the down breeds have similar usage guidelines and we've been over them twice so i'll be quick it says that there's a big variation in individual fleeces and its own qualities of each fleece should determine what you use it for and how you use it which i think is very true of really almost any breeds i can't think of too many that I wouldn't say that about. Maybe Merino? I don't know. Maybe. Even then, each one has its own characteristics, so I don't know. Okay, these wools dye nicely. They aren't lustrous, but the colors won't be flat. So it's interesting because I was very concerned about this particular one and Suffolk, which isn't in this study but would be in the next one if we do it, that the colors would be very flat and like, um, light absorbing which isn't always bad but um that's what i was expecting and it really isn't necessarily what i got but we're going to go through the color later fiber prep and spinning tips so it says they're versatile medium handling wools which i love shorter can be carded longer will want to be flicked or combed spin to maintain the loft and springy character now if you bought the kit to do this along with me, you probably already know that this one is the loftiest of these four. It, it, it looks like twice as much wool because it's just like poof. And I, I, I'm actually really excited to spin it, but I have to keep in mind that it's gonna have so much loft that while I'm spinning the singles, I need to go super, super thin because it's just gonna fluff up like crazy. Um, I'm not going to try to over twist it, but I will over ply it. I always over ply sock yarns. It's just a thing that I like. You do not have to do it. It doesn't mean it's the best way. That's the way I like it. Anyway, crazy is a different word for everybody. Do your thing. I know you can do it. I'm proud of you. You're learning. I'm learning. We're all learning together. It says best known for being unnecessarily overlooked as a fiber resource for hand spinners. So that was the same thing that they said about Dorset Down and I 100% agree. Um, it's, you know, fashion in knitting and spinning changes as far as like what, what fibers we like. And Shave Em to Save Em has made a big shift in what hand spinners and even hand knitters are looking for and it has been a great thing for the wool industry but I think we haven't quite caught up in the United States and 
honestly you guys this is no lie i just wish i could win the lottery so i could change that because it is going to cost a lot of money but it could happen so i don't know pray for me that someday i get to the point where i can get that started because that is something that is like i think about it all the time i literally think about it all the time <laughs> so funny that's it for the south down i'm going to dye it I, that's why I didn't show it to you because I actually already dyed it before I filmed this and then we'll be back and I'm going to show it to you. We're going to go ahead and check the length of the staple then and let's go dye some south down. All along I figured I would dye some after spinning and some before because I get asked a lot about when to dye stuff. And I think there is no right answer. It's really about how you want things to turn out in the end because there are so many different techniques you can use to dye the yarn or the fiber that will change it all up. But I decided to dye this before and I'll be dyeing the next one before spinning too. So let's go dye it. All right, it's time for me to dye the south down. I've actually really been looking forward to doing this because I can't wait to see how it turns out. We're back with the south down and this is outside kind of like my usual color choices and comfort zone but I am kind of happy with this. Oh, Gussie, you okay? <laughs> Gus just came down the stairs and I don't, something scared him and he, <laughs> he did spooky pee. Okay, so, um, it is outside my normal kind of colorways, but I think it's gonna be really awesome. And the mix of these, I sort of predict it's gonna gray out because of the way that I covered kind of a large range of the rainbow. Once those colors mix, they're gonna kind of tend to gray each other or brown each other out. And I, I guess, my guess is that this is gonna gray itself out, but I kind of think that's gonna be cool. So let's unbraid it. All right, I know that looked like magic, right? And let's, I need my glasses again to see the ruler. <laughs> hey, I'm 47 years old. My eyes don't work like they used to, you know? This, I'm trying to get just the tips of the main lock because you can see there's a few hairs longer, but this is kind of the main one. And it is, about three and a half inches so that's not bad for south down in fact it's kind of good for south down so i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to spin this with a short draw um a short forward draw the same as i would the only thing i'm going to do that i don't i didn't do when i was um spinning the natural wools is i'm going to split this lengthwise before i spin my singles because I want to shorten the color repeats. And for the last two, I've chain plied. 
um, I'm going to go ahead and separate this into three even weight amounts and then spin three bobbins and traditional three ply. But in this case, when it's pre-dyed, it would, if you want to preserve the color repeats, you can chain ply again. If you don't care and you want a barber pole and a more like a shift in colors that's more subtle isn't really the it's more gradual I guess you would say it's more gradual and you will get a whole bunch of variations because you get where all the different colors are mixing so that's cool too it's not like a right or wrong thing it's really just how you want your colors to come out in the end so I'm going to go ahead and do three and get that gradual color shift it's cool but it's weird our brains are kind of interesting really we're gonna go spin this and then i'll give you a little info on the yarn now we will knit some swatches and we're gonna go through the whole testing process you know how much i love it and i honestly south down is a favorite for me and it's a lot because of the law i'm gonna enjoy spinning this it'll be fun This is the finished South Down yarn. I have it wrapped on my Swift for so I can put it into soak. And you guys, it is so, so beautiful. So I got 254 yards and I'm gonna go get it in for a quick soak because I need to get it dried out and get it knit into samples. All right, number three, South Down. Check this out, first of all. This is the squishiest one so far. And my three samples are knit. I will come in close on one of them so you can really see. Okay, I'm gonna do the exact same process. I'm gonna tell you how big they are right now. So this is just a tiny hair over four inches wide. And three and a half inches tall and this is the same so perfect and we'll just make sure yep okay so they're all uniform I can stack them up you can see this one has like a fade into more green it is really they turned out really really pretty I'm gonna come in close So but I was right about the colors. They sort of grayed each other out, which is really, I mean, I kind of like that effect. I like this more than I thought I would. So I'm going to label them. I'm also going to take my first two wash onlys. This one's been washed twice. It's got two hash marks. This one's been washed once. It's got one hash mark. All of these are going in my wash machine. All of these are going in the washing machine. This one will go in the dryer as well and then we'll compare after. Okay, we're back in the laundry room. I have soap already in. Here's my swatches. There is some laundry in here. I don't have a ton because I usually do it at the beginning of the week. And But I do have enough laundry in here to like give it some you know friction and all that so I've got it on cold it is actually on cold and I'm gonna start it time to compare so we've got the washed one out I'm just gonna do that and I'll come back when the dryer ones back 
this is my control okay and this is what I've been doing is putting the washed one over top of it okay first of all definitely without any doubt no loss in size and <laughs> like many of these have been it kind of gets a benefit from the wash so look how beautiful it looks I mean it looks almost like brand new and best news of all it softened up quite a bit I was not fully sold on this yarn um, until now now I'm like whoa really really happy so definitely the South Down is a huge hit for me. It's so squishy and bouncy. So now we're gonna go back. Let's go to the Dorset Down next. Um, here's, this is my control and I'm gonna do the same thing. This is what I've been doing. Okay, no change in size. See that width, you can see. And see the height, no change in size at all. Did it fuzz? Mm, I don't think it did much how do the stitches look I would say very comparable to last time I see no difference the controls don't like to lay out but I don't want to stretch them so or even block them because that's going to change size and shape so let's lay this down on top all right yay so no change in size on the dorset horn either okay stitch definition I'm gonna say I don't believe there's any change in that either. I think this is pretty, pretty spot on how it was last time. I'm very excited about that. I can't believe it. All right, last sample is out of the dryer. This is the wash and dry sample. It, it definitely has a little bit of fuzz on it. It's not crazy, but there's a little. So I'm gonna grab my control and I'm gonna put it on top and see. All right, so now it's on top of the control. You can see width-wise, there is no shrinkage, not any. But length-wise, there is a very small amount. See that? So because it's such a small amount, I am going to go ahead and wash and dry this one again next time just to see if it shrinks more or if that was a one-time thing due to the, like the yarn puffing up and just kind of I don't know because it's it definitely does not feel like there was any felting because this might even work in the dryer I am actually shocked I did not think any of these would be close enough out of the dryer for me to want to use them. I am stunned. I can't believe it. Anyway, South Down, big success, huge. Two weeks from now, we'll be spinning this Cheviot. If you have a color scheme suggestion, drop it in the comments because I'm gonna be dyeing this this weekend for that spin. And I just thought I'd ask for a color suggestion. I'll see you guys on Sunday at two Eastern daylight for our live crafting time together. And I hope you guys have a great week. Thanks, I love you, bye.